Hello and welcome back to Shugly Shed Mark II build. Uh, I am going to start cladding the outside of the structure today. Um, I'm using this 19mm log lap, so it's sort of tongue and groove locking together. It gives a sort of kind of log cabin effect when it's all put together, but um, essentially this also adds uh, an immense amount of strength to the structure. Uh, these, because they tongue and groove, they lock into each other and then also they're screwed to the framework. Um, it adds a sort of outer skin that is one, weatherproof, and two, very strong. So that's kind of my job for today. Uh, I have a lot of this stuff. I think I've got enough. If I don't, I'm going to need to get some more. Um, and it's pricey, this stuff. So I want to make a good job of this and I also don't want to waste any or waste very little if possible. Um, so I've never done anything like this before, it's a bit of a learning curve for me um, I'm just going to fire in, start fitting it and learn as I go I suppose. Now before anyone asks, because I know someone will, um, there is a, there's a school of thought that says you should put a breathable but waterproof membrane over the framing um, before you put the cladding on. Um, and you need to leave an air gap so air can flow between the cladding and the, the um, membrane. The point basically is that that sort of furthers the, the weatherproofing of your structure. Um, however, membranes, uh, even the best quality breathable ones, do trap some kind of moisture and, and air, you know, in, in the moisture. Moisture in the air, sorry. Uh, and that will essentially rot the wood from the inside out um, over time. A kind of counter to what the whole point of a membrane sort of is. Um, you can do things to try and reduce it, like like I said, with the, the air gap and things like that. But membranes are only really critical when it comes to cladding that doesn't interlock. Um, so like I said, the shiplack cladding locks together and creates basically a, a sealed wall and there's no gaps. It's not like featherboard or, or shiplap or something like that. So Actually, I'm going to opt not to bother with the membrane. Um, I feel like it's, it potentially could be more problems than, than it solves. So what I'm going to do is fit the, the cladding um, straight to the frame. And then on the inside, I'm going to... It is it's treated already, but I'm going to further treat it all on the inside. Um, just to try and really stem off any um, water ingress or mould or anything or rot or anything like that in the future um, and then hopefully if the inside is treated nicely and permanently um, I can just maintain the outside of the wood and it will last me you know as long as I need it to. That's kind of my theory. I'm sure there are plenty of folk out there will do it differently and that's fine. Um, that's fine for your building because this is my building and I don't really want your opinion on it. <laughs> the only membrane I have is this sort of damp proof coarse membrane. Uh, I laid this if you remember under the concrete when the concrete slab got poured and I left this skirt on it which I've now pulled up and stapled to the the uprights. My idea is that when the first layer of log lap goes on um, it will go over this and create essentially a sort of a seal here so water won't be able to get under it or moisture or, or whatever or even just um, wind and things like that, and dust and leaves. So it'll create a little sort of seal to the ground. Um, that's kind of why I've, why I've left this as is, but I'm not running it the full height so that um, there's no moisture or, or uh, condensation trapped when, when I'm working inside it and breathing inside it. That's my, that's my theory anyway, so this is what I've gone for, and hopefully that makes a bit of a difference. I also have a tin of this liquid damp proof membrane. Essentially it's a bitumous um, membrane that you can paint on. So I'm going to put that on the first layer of log lap on the inside and the underside of it. So that that first layer, which is the most prone to rising damp, um, doesn't ever rot. That's kind of hopefully going to just add an extra layer of protection. So let's get measuring the log lap. I'm going to start on this wall here. Uh, start kind of going up way with it and see how we get on.
So we've got uh, one wall clad, as you can see. Um, use the big tarp. But uh, that's essentially how it's going to look. And then I'm going to stain it all black when it's finished. Uh, I just need to trim this edge up. Just cut these ends off um, at 45 degrees in order for the front ones to sort of meet up with them quite neatly, hopefully. Uh, but basically, that's um, that's the biggest, well, one of the biggest sides done. And um, the back side is it's marginally bigger, um, but it should be easier because there's no doorway on that side. This one, get the doorway for the store at the back. Um, so it's a little bit more complicated. Um, however, that was fairly easy. Uh, just kind of trying to make sure they go on level, uh, just measuring them as they go on uh, so that you don't end up at the roof with them, you know, even just a, a tiny bit off down the bottom, you know, gets bigger and bigger all the way up until you're like wildly out. So uh, yeah, pretty pleased with that. And uh, I've got a good system going now, so I reckon the other ones will go a bit quicker. Uh, it is, however, continuing to rain and I'm soaked through. So I'm probably gonna call it for today and carry on doing this. Uh, hopefully at the end of the week when it's a little bit drier because this is pretty miserable Welcome back to the cladding marathon um, I finished off that side in the rain the other day if you remember um, But that's all looking nice uh, I've also done this back wall which is the smallest wall It's only like 90 centimeters long and um, so that was an easy one to do and then I've cut it into the roof up there the slope uh, This corner is a bit annoying um, I cut these nicely as 45s, but my circular saw, which I ran up the edge, uh, wouldn't go up smoothly, and so the, the corners are a bit heggledy peggledy. But um, I'm I'm going to fill all these corners anywhere with anyway with uh, like exterior mastic, um, just for weather sealing. So not the end of the world. Now we started on the front elevation, so I've got this side and this side to do today. Um, I'm continuing my sort of damp proof coarse layer the black bitumen paint along here it's on the underside of the first plank and on the inside of the first plank as well uh, and on the door threshold um, just because when it meets the ground here I don't want it to be absorbing moisture and rotting from the ground up um, but from there I can start putting planks on all the way up to the roof and then because there's a slope to the roof I need to cut the last few planks to meet that slope That side done, looking pretty good if I do say so myself. I'm quite Scandinavian. Um, so that's basically the, the front elevation of the shed. That's the main doors. It's going to be a door and a half, and you'll see what I mean um, when I do that. This side's come up all right. I need to use some sandpaper and clean it up, and then I've also bought mastic to just fill any small gaps, make it a bit more weather tight. And um, aside from that, I'm quite pleased with that. I've just got to do the last few pieces scribing to that slope at the top there and then that's this wall done. The last wall to do is the big long back wall. Uh, although it is the technically the longest wall, it should in theory be the easiest one because it's not got any slope to scribe to. Uh, it's also smaller in height than that one and um, so it should just be a case of laying them on and just building them up and up and up and up and up. Uh, so a bit, bit time consuming but it's straightforward enough. I'm going to jump forward to finishing that back wall because, uh, well, it's just the same as all the other time lapses I've shown you cladding up. Uh, it's not really interesting. But once I've done that, we'll jump forward to um, working on the doors and trying to fit some doors to this thing and make it kind of a sealed unit. And then we can start doing the inside. Uh, <laughs> there's a few jobs to go, but we're getting there and it's starting to look a bit more like a shed, which I'm pretty excited about. There we go, back wall done, there's a healthy amount of sugar. <laughs> but basically uh, that's the cladding done for the entire building. All I have to do now are the doors 
and then it's a sealed unit. Um, so that's the next task, is starting on the doors. Um, this is the main door, doorway. Uh, there's going to be basically two doors, one's going to be slightly bigger than the other one. Um, so a main door that I open shut regularly and then like a sort of extra one that I can open um, to get bigger things in and out. And then at the back here in the store section, this just needs a door on the on here that can open and shut. So that's basically my next task is building doors. Door and a half. So, door and a half. This is basically the door that I'll go in and out of, usually. And then bringing bikes out, I've got a little latch up here and a little latch at the bottom. And you can open this entire section as well to give you like a sort of double width doorway. I've still got to do the storeroom door um, but that's just going to be a single door and it opens and shuts so that's that's not as hard as the door and a half i think i'm basically going to leave it here and um, that's all the shiplap done i've got my front door done uh, so basically the next step is i've got some you know trimming and just neatening up to do i've got an edge to go around the doorway to make that a bit neater as well um, and then the whole thing's getting stained black um, personal decision, I think it'll look quite cool, I hope. Um, this stuff at the bottom obviously is just the damp proof stuff, so hopefully when it's all stained black that'll blend in. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I'm gonna call it an evening. It's Friday night and I'm gonna go and have a beer and chill. Uh, maybe I'll start sheeting the inside at some point, I'm not sure, I haven't really made up my mind, um, but I've got all the stuff to do that. I just feel like I've worked myself to the bone for the past week, so I might just I rest my laurels for a bit. Anyway, as usual, please do give me a like, leave me a comment, and make sure you subscribe to the Shugly Shed channel. Uh, it's really important, and I appreciate it. As usual, goodbye.